I've got it in my head this morning that I'm going to treat you to something a little bit different. When I was in the camera club, I uh, put in an image that I doctored quite a lot. I'd done a lot of editing to it. Um, and uh, yeah, it got a, a highly commended. It won an award. It got a ribbon and I was really pleased. It's actually on the wall at home and uh, quite proud of that shot. It looks quite good, it looks quite real. Uh, if you do it wrong, it can look very fake. Now, I'm not sure how good I can make this image work because it's very subjective to the subject, the sky, the water and stuff like that. So I'm stood down on Hall's jetty at the moment. It's a brand new jetty. Um, it's very, very bright and shiny. And I'm just doing a couple of exposures, uh, horizontal and uh, vertical and I'm just trying to get as much light and information in the shot as I can. At the moment it's quite dark, so I'm actually going to go even lighter still. So I'm at 50 seconds, so I'm just going to really bump it up. I want to do a really crazy two minute exposure uh, because it's quite dark at the moment and I want to get a little bit of detail in the water. I want you to be able to see the water, but I do like the fact that the water is really dark. This could be quite an interesting one. Um, but I may have to turn the polarizer around to get the water really light because ideally you want the sky and the water looking very similar. Um, it is in the distance. Uh, the first straight shots, the straight shots look really fantastic. So I'll put a couple of the straight shots up and show you what we're working with and then um, we'll move on to this fine art. So I've got a polarizer on there at the moment. I'm doing one with it on and one with it off. So I've got the option of dark water and light water. And then I've also uh, got the 10 stop on there and giving me some long exposures. And I want to get long exposures because I want the water to be perfectly smooth, almost like milk. And I want the sky to be really streaky and smooth as well, uh, so I can blend the water in with the sky and imitate the fact that there is no land mass behind me and make this <clears throat> kind of fine art looking image, um, which I'll do on uh, Photoshop for you and uh, show you how it works. Very, very simple. If you want to have a go at this, uh, carry on watching and uh, we'll find out how turned it round now I'm going for a horizontal version and uh, the grey skies are coming in quite nicely which is what we want we want all this greyness because it's going to be a monochrome image it's going to be black and white um, that's the best way of doing them really it's very difficult to make it in colour we don't want any colour at all so uh, I think I've got the images that I need in the uh, horizontal in the vertical position and as you can see I'm using my atoll and my atoll means I can spin my camera any direction and still see the screen. It is an absolutely fantastic little piece of kit. If you're interested, I've made a video for it and I'll put a link up for you so you can have a look. It is amazing for this kind of thing. A lot of people said to me, uh, why do I need to turn the screen the other way around? Well, look at this, the camera's way up above my head and I would not be able to see that screen. I would not be able to set the composition up. I would not be able to do anything unless I have got that at all so I can spin my camera the opposite way around to the way the L bracket works. So this really does work. And as you can see over my shoulder, just here, there's some ladies going for a swim. Oof. I'd love to, to have the braveness to do that, but it just looks very, very cold, even in their wetsuits. <laughs> You're very brave, you really are. <laughs> so I think I've found the optimum sort of time and the sky now is absolutely perfect for this. There's a little bit of color and texture in the sky, which will definitely work for blending in. So I've got an F8 ISO 125 on my little Fuji and we're at 30 seconds and that's given me enough to smooth out all the water but still have a little bit of look to it so it's not just one plain white mass um, and it's the, the, the textures in the sky are just stunning, the colours are great, everything just seems to be perfect for doing this so I'm hoping that when we get back into Photoshop um, and on the computer we will be exactly where we need to be. Yeah I think that's pretty good. I'm just going to do one more, a little bit lighter, I'm just going to bump it up to 50 seconds just to make sure because the conditions at the moment are absolutely spot on. So I'll see you guys back in my den, office, room, wherever it is, with the computer and I'll show you how to put this together. See you in a bit. So here we are. We're not in my office, we are actually in my van. And uh, it's time for me to have a little look and see if we can make this image that I promised you. Um, it's not always the easiest thing to do <laughs> when it's live on camera. Now, I'm just gonna show you this in Lightroom to start with. This is the image that I actually finished. I processed at home, I had a tinker with it and I got it to work pretty well. Now I'm gonna try and show you how to actually 
produce this image. It's not too hard, but we're gonna produce it from this image. Bear with me, it might not end up exactly the same because doing them twice, uh, this is about two weeks since I did this one and I'm actually only getting around to doing the video now. But you can see the file number there, 4849, uh, which means we did use this one, 4849. So you can see the difference between the two and I'm not sure if I can actually open them up and show you them both together. There you go. I can show you them both together. Both exactly the same camera settings, 13.8 seconds. And uh, yeah, it's, it's quite a transformation between the two. So let's get this fine art image made from this uh, raw file. So you can see we've got the photo uh, up in Lightroom. We're we wanna just do a little bit of editing. So we're just gonna have a little bit of tinkering. I like the sky as it is. Um, and you'll see from the two images that we have to get rid of that background because it's the background that we do not want. So we're gonna keep the sky as it is. Maybe just lighten it up a little bit just to give us a bit more something to play with at the top there. And then we wanna just adjust the bottom. We need to make sure this pier really does stand out or the jetty really does stand out. So we're gonna have a, a linear gradient. We're gonna bring it right up quite tight to the bottom there. If you keep your finger on the um, shift key, it will actually keep it nice and straight for you. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna lift the shadows up and just try and bring the bottom half of the image looking similar to the top half of the image, if that makes any sense. Uh, we're gonna add a little bit of contrast to it because that'll just bring out a little bit more of these walk boards. And then we're gonna have a look at the highlights and maybe raise the highlights. That brings out the walk boards a little bit more again and just adjust our whites and see what that does. Again, that brings out the walk boards even more. So we're starting to get a little bit more down here in the bottom. We're gonna just do another one have another linear gradient and this time we just want to bring them shadows up just a little bit more and this time we're going to just have a slightly different version on it and we're just going to grab the shadows and lift the shadows up again and this should just bring up our shadows as high as we possibly can in these bottom areas right so once we've done that close that down now we have something to work with uh, we could just put a slight linear gradient in the top i think we'll just add a little bit just at the top just to bring that top section down just slightly so we're just going to drop the highlights a little bit just so that it sort of almost looks gray right that will do so right, you need to open this now in Photoshop so we'll right click edit in go over to Photoshop and click on Photoshop and it should jump over to Photoshop right so now we're in Photoshop you can see the images here in front of us and uh, we now have to start doing a little bit of work and it's very very simple to do this I'm only going to show you the very basics of it and it takes a lot of time if you want to start messing and playing with it you can go as far as you really want on this image um, but the simplest way to do this is to literally highlight the sky and drag your sky back down so we're going to go for a square um, rectangular mark marquee tool we're going to go to the top corner we're going to drag across the sky without clipping the um, land in the middle we just want as much as that sky as we possibly can like that once we've done that we need to make a copy layer so we're going to have a new layer and we're going to make sure our other layer is highlighted we're going to press ctrl c for copy we're going to go back onto our second layer and ctrl v and you can see now here in this corner in the, in the um, layer section that you'll see that there's another part of the sky and if I turn the bottom off, you can see that I've got this section of sky up in the top. So all we need to do now is make sure the section of the sky is highlighted. Press Control T. Once we've got Control T, we get hold of this part of the sky. And you can see that the whole sky is moving. We don't want the whole sky moving. So we're just going to click No on that. Do again. Control T. And this time we're going to hold down Shift. And then we're going to drag the sky down. And you can see the sky is coming down. I'm going to go quite low with it. Just clipping the top of the uh, walk boards. We're gonna bring it in because this is where we wanted to get it coming into. We need to bring it right in as low as we can. So now we've got hold of that, we can click yes for okay. And then we need to open up our gradient tool. Once we've got our gradient tool, we just have to play with this a little bit and just do a small gradient. If I go in a little bit tighter for you, you can just see we just clip that top of the mountain there. So we're just going to get hold of this and we're going to put, keep our finger on the shift button again and we're just going to drag down and it should just add a gradient. Now what you can see it's done is it's made a black and white gradient and we don't want that. So we're just going to plex Control Z to get rid of that and we're going to go back and try that again and see why that did what it did. Let's try putting a layer mask on it 
and let's have another go. A gradient, like I say, press the shift key, just a little bit in the middle, and what that's done is it's gone the wrong direction. Okay, so control Z and we need to go up. So again, keep it nice and straight, and you can see that it's made a bit of a fog. So we're gonna do it again, go a bit bigger this time. And each time we go a bit bigger, it's just blending it in more and more and more. So we're gonna go higher. You see now I've come over a bit too far this side. So let's go back, shift key, and you just, it's a bit more finesse with it. So that's a little bit better. You can see how it's blended everything in at the bottom there. And it's made everything here softened. So it's softened everything. It looked like it's mist going off and you've got a little bit of mist down here on these ends of these pier as well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just press Control T again and I'm gonna drag it down a little bit further. So keeping my finger on the shift button, I'm gonna go down a little bit further and now it's entering into the pier. Click OK for yes. And I'm gonna do the same again. Go into my gradient tool, make sure my layer mask is, connect, is clicked. Keep my finger on the shift key and just drag it up again a little bit higher and see if we can get rid of some of this. Every time you do it, it's gonna adjust it. Now that's quite nice. It's, it sort of softened the image going into the uh, end of the pier. I'm gonna go one more, go a little bit bigger this time, all the way up and see if I can soften it even more. I'm gonna to have to come back down. Let's try something like this. It's trial and error until you get it just where you want it. That's not bad. Okay, that's not bad at all. Right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open a brush. I'm gonna make sure I've got a soft brush. So the flow, I'm gonna bring the flow down. Occupancy, I'm gonna bring the occupancy down and I'm gonna press the bracket keys to just make it slightly bigger. And then now, if I get this image in the middle for you, so you can see it, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit for you so you can see the side of the image. I'm just gonna brush with, see we've got a black and a white brush. I'm just gonna brush with black, because black's at the bottom, white's at the top. So with a black brush, I'm just gonna brush along this edge to get rid of that sharp line all the way along the image. And you can see the sharp line is now disappearing and we've got a soft glow going into the background. Okay, so that almost looks natural the way it's just fading its way into the mist in the background. But we do want to keep a little bit of these sticks. So using our bracket keys again, I'm going to go a little bit smaller and I'm just going to bring my occupancy down a little bit more. I'm just going to brush at these and try and bring these back a little bit and just brush them down and just make it a little bit sharper where the fog has not come over the ends of the sticks and we're just going to make sure we've got all these front ones very clear because we don't want any fog on the front ones because it won't look real and now we just start to blend that back in and then as you zoom out you can see that the image is looking a lot realer because the fog is just going off into the background and it's just catching the ends of the uh, jetty so I think we're looking pretty good at that. I quite like that from a distance. If you come back down and just have a look at it, I think that actually looks pretty good. So we're going to close that and save that and see if we can do a little bit of editing in uh, Lightroom. So we'll just click on close, say yes, and then it should open itself back up in Lightroom. We're now back in Lightroom. As you can see now, the image is looking pretty good. Um, but I do think if we bring up our original image, uh, which is this one. I'm going to bring up our original image, press C and bring them both up together. It's not going to show me that one. Ah, yes it is, it's because it's still colour. Sorry, it's still in a, a colour format and we need to make it black and white. So if you look at the two together, um, they're very similar, but your eyes drawn in, I think, more to... I See, I've kept mine quite sharp on the original one, um, but it, your eyes drawn into this this section here, into the middle, and at the moment it's sort of everything's sort of quite bright and we want to pull your eyes right in close but first of all we need to convert that to black and white to make it look right so there's our image we're going to go into develop and then we're going to click on black and white I think and now we've got this black and white image what we can do just to adjust our black and white image is just play with the contrast and the exposure so a little bit more contrast brings out these nice stripy details of the uh, warp boards. We can add, we can bring our highlights down a little bit. See the way that's blending the top of the image to the bottom of the image a little bit more. 
and then we can maybe lift our whites let's have a look and see if that that gives you again a little bit more contrast between the top and the bottom in the image so what I want to do now is just I want to try and fade this top end in to sort of blend in with the bottom part slightly so we're going to open our tools and we're going to go do a linear gradient and we're going to do a soft linear gradient a nice big one and we're just going to drag that up somewhere to the top and I'm just going to bring down the exposure slightly to try and tame down the top so you can see by darkening the top down you can see it's blending in a little bit more with the bottom so we're going to just tame that down a little bit our histograms already being pulled into the middle as well which is quite nice so that's looking pretty good we're going to open another one and I think we're going to have an elliptical tool and what this is going to do this is going to draw your eye now into this middle section so I'm going to put an elliptical tool in the middle something like that drag it over the center of the image and this is where it's going to pull your eye right into the center of the image so watch very carefully how we do this we're going to invert the image so we're now looking at everything on the outside I think we're going to go a bit wider and a bit softer so we're going to make that softer and we're going to make it a bit bigger okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to darken everything that's red and leave everything that's white or clear in the middle alone as soon as I click on the exposure the outside of the image becomes darker and you can see how your eye is now being drawn into the center there I'm just going to bring it down a little bit more and if I press on H that gets rid of the outside and again I'm going to go with the highlights I'm going to drag my highlights down a little bit more and just have a look and see what it does so it's pulling the highlights down I think if we go down a little bit more and then close the tools and lift the exposure right back up again you can see now the way your eye is being pulled into the middle of the image again if I look at my original image and it's not necessarily going to be identical but bring up the two images and I've got a bit more of a prominent stripe where I started compared to this a lot softer line I like here the one thing that could be changed I think we could just bring out these tiny bit of posts a little bit more but I think the exposure between the two of them is looking pretty good so let's just back this up and let's go back into Photoshop. We're just going to edit in. I just want to have a try on something. Edit original. Open. Go back onto my layer mask. Get myself a brush. And I'm just going to see if I can just bring out these posts a bit more. Because I think... They need to be I think they need to be a bit sharper and more prominent in the image to make them stand out so I'm just going to pull these posts back out of the fog and I think it'll look a lot nicer I'm clicking on the brush a bit at a time so I don't over overdo it and I think that might do and I'm hoping when we go back into Lightroom it's going to keep all of our Lightroom effects Okay, let's try that close yes so now back in Lightroom and you can see slap bang in the middle there if I just zoom in for you that this is now when it's loading you can now see that it's a lot sharper where we want it and your eye is being drawn into this brighter part of the image and we've got this nice soft minimalistic image so I hope that is our is good enough to show you how it works it's very very easy take the section of the sky drag it down and that's how people make these fine art looking images um, it's quite fake it's quite false but it's very good and very fun to try and do have a go let me know if you managed to do it uh, please maybe contact me on my facebook group landscape of vlogtography adventures show me your images um, i'd love to see your take on it and i've seen this done with boats and ships and things and all sorts of stuff but a jetty get yourself out shoot a jetty make sure you leave a little section between the water and the land in the background and then got a good sky that you can drag the sky down no good having a tiny little bit of sky you need a big section of sky at the top so you can drag it down and that's it really really simple and easy to do hope you've enjoyed this don't forget to like and subscribe give us that thumbs up it's been fun showing you how to do this i know it's not easy doing these tutorial things when you're trying to do it real live action um, 
but yeah hopefully that image looks good enough for you i think it looks pretty good myself and uh, yeah till next time ciao for now bye bye